So as I said, uh, in the beginning, price and security is a must. So uh, we wanted to make sure that there is a built-in uh, solution, a built-in way in the repack that enables us to ensure uh, better security of, of, of the apps built using repack. Um, so we decided to use a like algorithm, a way to, to sign the code that is widely used in the industry and in app distribution uh, apps in the, the App Store, Apple App Store and Google Play Store are, are using the similar technique to to make sure that the code that the end user is getting is actually the code that the app developer wanted them to get without any malicious uh, tampering of the code or, or, or so on. Uh, and also we uh, we, we kind of uh, implemented in a similar way to the code push, uh, which is uh, sometimes mentioned like alternative to repack, which is actually not, but it's trying to it's working the same waters basically. So um, without intro to what code signing does on a high level, uh, I think we can go to Kuba, who actually implemented most of it, and talk about what the code sign is actually trying to prevent. Yeah, so there are basically three types of attack that we want to prevent with uh, code signing. The first one is tampering with our uh, with our code in the bundle, right? So uh, code signing can prevent tampering attacks by ensuring that the software code has not been altered by the unauthorized parties. Uh, if an attacker modifies the code, the digital signature will be invalidated, warning users that the software has been tampered with. Um, another type of attack is spoofing. So spoofing is uh, when someone poses as a legitimate authority delivering software, but is actually uh, someone with malicious intents. So code signing can also prevent that because um, we verify that the uh, signature matches the one we uh, we created with our private key. As long as we don't leave the private key. Right. Exactly. The weakest mm. uh, link in all of that is is the private key. So uh, if if it's leaked, then it's basically it's better to take that uh, code uh, of the CDN. Um, uh, right. And the last type of attack is man in the middle attack, uh, where someone could be. Uh, eavesdropping on the conversation and could modify the responses and also tamper with the bundle. Um, okay, so moving on to, uh, uh, let's go over the process of how code signing works in the context of bundles produced by Repack. Uh, as you might know, the process of bundling in Repack is called compilation and it's the same in Webpack because it's Repack is just a wrapper around Webpack in the end. Um, so the code signing process happens at the at the very end of the compilation where bundles have their final shape. We then take the content, contents of each bundle and create a hash out of it. We take that hash and we embed it into the bundles in the form of GWTs signed with a private key. At this moment, we have a signed bundles that can be used in the super app. Uh, then moving on to the client side, when we download that bundle, we first we split that bundle into two parts. We have the code part and the signature part. Uh, we first analyze the signature, whether it was indeed signed with the private key we expected to, by comparing it uh, with the public key, well, not really comparing, but uh, utilizing the public key in, in, uh, in verifying that the signature was uh, indeed uh, what we expected to. Um, and that public key is embedded into the app uh, downloading that bundle. Uh, so after we finish with that and it goes without errors, we then move to comparing the uh, hash of the bundle that we actually downloaded by generating it again uh, with the hash that's inside of the JWT that we sent over with the bundle. Uh, and if all of that goes without the hitch, we know that it's the bundle that we are looking for, and uh, we can proceed and uh, load that bundle into our app. Uh, I, it all sounds good, and I, and I like I want to repeat back that security is the top priority, and whatever it takes to ensure the security, we should do this. Uh, but what you just described sounds like there's a lot of happening uh, during the build time, and then during the runtime when the when the client needs to decode all the stuff. Um, is there like over performance overhead for for doing that or mm, so when it comes to build time there's little to 
a very little overhead, although we do the hashing and creation of the GWT uh, in, the, in the GS, uh, it doesn't really matter as it only adds like, um, in the end there are like, uh, usually there are like 10 bundles at most. Uh, perhaps in bigger apps, this could be, this number could be bigger, but it's usually around 10 in our case. And it's done on the, on the, showcase. either the developer machine or on the CI. So the machine is pretty beefy. So it should yeah. not have problems yeah. with doing yeah. that. Yeah. 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 So very little to no overhead. And when it comes to client, we do uh, all of that, um, you could say decoding uh, on the native side. So, um, so the most uh, kind of, um, performance intensive process would be creating the hash of that bundle, right? But our phones have um, hardware acceleration for cryptography functions. So that should be very fast and there should be little to no overhead when loading that bundle. In the end, the, the biggest, uh, uh, the slowest part of downloading the bundle would be the network transfer itself. Yep. Okay, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. It's not adding any overheads or a little. Okay. Uh, should I go on to the next slide? Uh, yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. So I think we can sum up the the, the first feature of the repack to the zero go sign in. So um, we are sorry, but for now, there's no documentation available soon. We are working on it and we plan to release it as soon as possible as it's done and it's comprehensive enough to to, to be a good documentation. Uh, if you want to use it, uh, experiment with code sign-in or like try to use it in your demo app or whatever. Uh, there is a the link to the pull request that actually uh, was based for the implementation of code sign-in, and there's a usage section in the in the description of that PR. So it tells you what you need to do in the what you need to change in the webpack config. It tells you what you need to add to to the app, like the public key mentioned, uh, and basically walks you through all the things necessary to use to leverage the code sign-in. And uh, going back to the things that we want to add, uh, what we want to update in the super app showcase, uh, code signing is one of them. So we want to provide a like state of the art uh, implementation of code signing in terms of the super app uh, showcase. So you can base your implementation off of that. 